All right, all right. It's time to take a look at some technicals that we have. NVIDIA, Tesla, Bitcoin, and give updates and a brief update on the indices as well. So let me put up the charts. We'll get right into it. And by the way, you guys can see these charts before they hit YouTube over at the Discord available through the Patreon. That link is down in the description. So here we go. NVIDIA yesterday. Great day. News coming out that uh, further demand for NVIDIA chips had a great impact on the price. And yesterday, over in the Discord, I put out before the market opened about breaking up above 108 that we had a shot at about 111 all the way up to about 115 to almost 116. So actually, you can see those two prices here on your screen. They're worth checking out. And you can see the sort of day that we had. This blue line right across here is the 50-day. So that's something to watch out for because we're just below it. We do need to break above that to have a shot up here at 124.50. So keep your eyes on that. If we get rejected off of that, then we're looking for a retest. So in the near term for NVIDIA, we have the RSI on the daily chart breaking up above 50 as well, moving up above this yellow moving average that's down here on the, on the RSI chart. So sort of kind of in a questionable moment, but it does look like we could potentially flip bullish. We're going to have to watch and see. SPY, by the way, if we go out to the daily chart on this one, it is important to note that we did strongly move up above the 50-day on that one, which is good for market bias. And then when we go to the Qs, if we go to the daily chart on that one, there we go, which by the way, these numbers, you, you might notice if you watch my videos, these are updated numbers and updated charting for what you saw with the Qs. And the reason for that is that I had a new person join the Discord and they're like, hey, I haven't seen the updated thing for, for the Qs. It's been a while. So I was like, well, here you go. Plus they also mentioned day trade. So I, I, there's some other lines that are on here and stuff that are more important to the intraday stuff. But these big prices that you see here in green and red explain quite a bit of what we can see to the upside or the downside of this. This blue number right here, by the way, is yesterday's close for the 50-day. We're down below it on the queues. We need, do need to break up above that. If we're able to, that could also help NVIDIA in its upward trajectory, its upward journey to 124.50. We do have to get up on top of that 50-day first. If we do, we have that clear shot here. So I'm watching for that to break for that next long move to happen in the near term for NVIDIA. If we get rejected instead, the lower price targets are on here as well. Once again, for your viewing, screenshotting, whatever pleasure that you have, whatever interest you have in NVIDIA, those numbers are here for you. So let's go over to Tesla. For Tesla, uh, another chart that I need to update the style on, but the technicals themselves should stay the same. So what we got yesterday Here's the price targets, by the way, that we're looking at. So uh, to the upside, anyway, the downside ones are down here. You guys can always go back and pause the video. Uh, but to the upside on this, what do we got? Well, we actually are sitting on top. We opened on top of the 50-day, hit resistance up here at 228, getting rejected right now. We do need to break up above that to have room to 233 and up above that to have room to 242. And we are in a rising wedge formation on that one as well. So pay attention to the diagonal lines that you see on this that we could find rejection at the top. And off the bottom of this, we're watching to see if we fall down through. If we do fall down through that, especially if we retest that trend line, that could signal a much further fall. So that's what to watch out for. For Tesla, for Bitcoin, we broke up above critical resistance today. We actually peekaboo, peekaboo, peekaboo. There you are. Uh, this next time. So if today closes up above this critical resistance, we finally have our shot to get back up to that $60,000 mark and then activating the other price targets that I have up here to the north of this instead of playing around with these ones that I have to the south side for Bitcoin. So for SPY, just a little bit of commentary that I have for you. There we go, shrink that up so you can see some of the price targets. I have recently moved 582 down to 579. So that's one small update that I made for that one. There we go, zoom in a little bit more. We are in a resistance area that lasts all the way up until about 558, and then again at about 560, and then again at about 563, and then we have that top trend line uh, to contend with as well. And if I reset the view, you can see that top trend line better as across the previous uh, price peaks that we have on here. So uh, there we go, just making sure that that was exactly where it needed to be. Across the bottom of this, by the way, these two most recent dips that we got, those are gonna be very telling for us as well for where we could find uh, some of that support coming through. So be on the lookout for that for SPY. QQQ, there we go. So let me take away some of these intraday markups that I have, and we'll talk a little bit more about what we see on the charts for the Qs 
And then uh, we'll wrap up this video. I'll, go, I'll tell you guys a little bit more about the Discord, the Patreon, and I will also tell you how you can learn more about technical analysis and use it with your trading to really help you out uh, in your trading journey towards a financial freedom, or maybe you're just making a little bit extra scratch on that. So uh, bring this up here for you. These are the lines that we need to pay attention to, the prices that we need to pay attention to. Like I said, you can screenshot these. They're there for you. I'll even put some more to the upside on this one. So right at about this value right up here, uh, almost at 480 is where we find a little bit more resistance. And that actually speaks a lot to the trouble that we had from about 480, uh, 479 to about 483. I'm also going to color that green because that would be to the upside from where we're at right now. And let's also mark where the top of that is. Just going over here to this spot, you'll notice that's 480. And then we have a little bit more of a free float up above that. So just about one more on just because I do like to look in the bullish direction. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but we also like to be prepared in that bearish direction as well. You can see where those resistances are. And if we go up a little higher, we actually have a big old tangle. I don't have it drawn in officially yet because I just started up updating these this morning. And let me turn off the magnet tool that'll fix that one. Drag that up up here to the north about 491 all the way up to about 499 is what we're looking at for that. For the Qs as well, quick stop by IWM. So for IWM, what we're looking for in the pre-market here, we're up close to 210. We do need to break up above that. If we do, we have room to about 212. So we have a bit of a free rise area in here from where we find ourselves right now. So let me grab the price label so that you guys can see that. So price label, this is the number that we're looking to beat coming up for resistance. And then here's where we could go to following that this top trend line that you see up here is actually pretty important. And depending on when we get to it, if we get to it, that's going to be important for us. Plus, there's this 50 day creeping up this way that's also going to play a role. We have a lot of convergence right in there. We'll probably have a lot of trouble right around 213 if we continue to go in the bullish direction in the near term for the Russell 2000 stocks. And um, guys, I think now's a great time to bring up about the Fed. Uh, the Fed and their meeting. I think it's actually going to be the summer of economic projections on September the 18th that comes out with the Fed interest rate decision that's going to be critical to what we see for a movement from IWM, from the Russell 2000 stocks. The whole market should actually have it as a catalyst, but Russell 2000, I think it's going to be especially impactful for signaling further expectation of Goldilocks or recession, or it also can come down to the number of cuts that we get because the more rate cuts, the better for the IWM stocks. If you guys want to see my buys and sells, the link is down in the description for the Patreon. Click on that, sign up, head on over to the Discord, see the buys and sells, talk to me and my community members, and then also Oh, down in the description as well, you'll find the link for the Stockmo Academy technical analysis course that also discusses the, the bread recipe trading strategy, which is wonderful, clean, easy to use, and your cost for the course can get paid for in a, in a single trade. It really is that effective and that awesome. And you can see the testimonials that are in there as well. And I also have a chapter in there on options in Stockmo Academy. If you guys use the coupon code Dr. D O C T O R, you can get a pretty, pretty massive discount on that course as well, making it even more affordable for you. Guys, check out that stuff down in the description. If anything else, that subscribe button helps to support the channel. Hit me up in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. I am Dr. Stock, Doctor of Education. Remember, my friends, that learning is earning. And we'll see you in the next video.